Alright, tonight I wanted to look at my Darth Vader mini helmet prop replica. I got a new Darth Vader figure today, the SH Figure Arts Darth Vader, and it looks fantastic. And I was just glancing at it and noticing that it, while it looks good and it uses a dark gunmetal gray, it doesn't have the two tone paint job that the prop had. And I wanted to see what it looked like again, so I went looking for this helmet and realized that I never unpacked it after I moved to this house. Um, I've got a display room for my collection and I unpacked all of my Star Wars helmets except this one apparently. It's just been sitting in a box so I pulled it out. Anyway, this is how big it is next to a uh, roughly five and a half, six inch figure. Um, this figure is great. I'll do a review of it here soon. Um, but let's look at this. This is the Darth Vader um, authentic mini miniature helmet by Riddell which comes in this really ugly hideous box actually um, I can't even zoom out big enough, enough to fit it in frame it's huge it's, it's gaudy it has a little scroll that talks about Star Wars and Darth Vader unable to breathe on his own Darth Vader was forced to mask to wear a breath mask and life supporting body armor blah 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 um, these are 45 percent scale um, for more than 50 individual parts that are all rigorously inspected and meticulously assembled by hand patterned off the movie original um, has a neat little blurb on the back that kinda shows some of its features die cast metal parts realistic breathing apparatus communication device and it shows that it breaks apart into into uh, multiple pieces so you can see the detail and stuff let's take a look at it quick you can see that it's got um, it's got the two-tone gunmetal and gloss black paint job um, we'll talk more about that when I take it apart it looks really good it's reasonably shiny you can kinda of see my reflection in that you can see some of the detail neck clamps and I don't remember what it all says they are it comes with a sheet of blueprints that explains what some of the uh, bits and baubles are on it and I'll look at that in a little bit it's attracting the dust from somewhere um, anyway it, it looks really cool I, just, I really like how it looks it disassembles into three parts. We'll look at that in a minute, but just wanted to look at it. Um, because it's the reveal helmet, I believe it's based on the on the Darth on the, on the Return of the Jedi helmet. It looks it much, looks much too symmetrical, too cleanly made to be the New Hope or Empire versions. Nice little Imperial logo stamped on the bottom, like it said. So uh, I'll cut here for a second and. Should turn off that overhead light, um, and I'll take it apart, and we'll look at those pieces in just a second. Before I take it apart, I guess I I just forgot to mention that I don't remember if there was a year on here. Riddell had the license for this a long time ago. Uh, it looks like in '97, and then sometime later, Master Replicas got the prop replica license, and they made. I don't remember if they if they made. The, the Vader helmet, um, but they did several clone troopers, a stormtrooper. Uh, they were just about the more okay. Bridell, when they had the license, they did Darth Vader, Boba Fett, um, I believe Luke's X Wing helmet, and then they were going to do a TIE fighter pilot, I believe. Like, there were some prototypes. Uh, I don't know if they got to full test shots before they stopped, but for whatever reason, they stopped making them. The TIE fighter pilot never came out. Master Replicas got the li the license, and they did a bunch of. You know, they did a clone trooper and then repainted it like six times, and did a couple of stormtrooper helmets. I, like I said, I don't remember if they reissued this one. They did reissue Boba Fett, and I believe it was just the Riddell helmet just remade. Um, and then, damn them! Their next helmet was going to be the Tie Fighter pilot when they also gave up the license. And so I've never gotten a, a mini mini version of the TIE Fighter Pilot helmet. Anyway, 
I'm going to take it apart. And of course I forgot that I just said we were going to look at the schematics. It comes with this sheet of paper. Um, blueprints for Darth Vader's helmet and breath mask. And it's got fun little things like a Durasteel shell and a main air intake. Points out the various bits of the of the mask. Let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit. Breathable intermix nozzles and Blyer step down intakes and Granar multiplexers and Dimac filtered gas through flows and I don't know what any of this shit is, but it tries to be in universe. Explain what the stuff is. Heat dispersion vents were those copper things on the top of the mask. External neural sensor arrays and magnetic clamps and all sorts of interesting stuff. So there. All right. Now that we have it in its uh, component pieces, we can get a better look at the detail. Start with the dome because it's nothing more than than uh, than a dome. And we've already seen most of it. And inside, you can just kind of see how it attaches to the top of the mask. And here is the mask. Zoom in a little bit. And here you can really see the the two-tone paint job that Darth Vader's mask had and it's really subtle but it just kind of helps brings out the angles on film um, you know this face and this face are the glossy black and this one's the matte gunmetal this whole side is gunmetal I guess the whole top half <clears throat> shiny black gunmetal and I don't know when I discovered and I don't remember still, I, it was probably this helmet rather than joining the 501st, but when I joined the 501st, I mean, they make a big deal about your, your costume has to be as screen accurate as possible. So your helmet, at least if it's a, a New Hope or... They used, I don't remember if they used this deco for all three original films, but I think they did. Anyway, it has to match that. Um, and I thought that was cool. So there's greebles and some sculpted detail. That thing. And I haven't watched Return of the Jedi in a while. I don't remember how much this matches the screen prop, but I bet it matches fairly well. There's the little nose ridges. So if we grab the dome again, that little plastic circle thing just kind of clips over top of that and it's kind of hard to get on, but it holds on really well. Um, the the vents here are, um, whatever you want to say, they're open so you can see through them. Inside there's not really any detail. It's just how the little greebles and whatnot are glued in. And that's how the stand clips in. It just shoves over top of that. So the bottom of the mask is all the gunmetal gray. Um, it's got all the weird, again, greeblies and what's nots on the back of his neck and then there's some wiring and breathing tubes and voice modulator or whatever it is the the directions the directions the schematic that it comes with tells you what all this stuff is but I haven't actually looked at it I'll get that out in a little bit so that just kinda tabs in and it kinda stretch in place a little bit around the clips and there just locks into place you can imagine Sebastian Shaw's pasty white um, pasty white skin over there this is actually kind of terrifying it takes a great amount of force and then it just slams into place really hard to see in there so you kind of just feel it into place there we go there we go and it goes back together so that is the uh, the Riddell mini Star Wars Darth Vader Return of the Jedi helmet um, I really like it and I'm glad that I have this piece and it looks really great on my shelf and I am dumb for having lived in this house for almost two years and had this 
just stuck in its box sitting on a shelf rather than on display on a shelf. But uh, it's going on a shelf right now after this. So thanks for watching.